Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Muhammad Afan bin Shoei and my ID number is MH18056. So uh, today uh, I will do a, a presentation about engine cooling system for the introduction to automotive engineering subject. So okay, the first one is what is engine cooling system? Basically, uh, a typical automotive pulley system comprises a series of channel cast into the engine block and cylinder head surrounding the combustion chambers with circulating water, air or other coolant to carry away excessive heat. And uh, basically, a vehicle engine cooling system serves not just to keep the engine cool, but uh, to keep uh, its temperature warm enough to ensure efficient and clean uh, operation. So basically, there are two types of uh, engine cooling system, which is the first one is air cooling system and the second one is the water cooling system. Okay, the, first, the first one I will uh, explain about air cooling system. Basically, uh, the component of most air cooling system are very simple actually. The cooling fan is placed in a semicolor ducting. The ducting covers the cylinder head uh, and its interior is fitted with a buffer with direct the flow of air over the engine cooling fins and uh, through an uh, oil cooler and basically an air cool system is generally used in a small engine say up to uh, 15 to 20 kilowatt and uh, the air system is used uh, in the engine of motorcycle scooter airplane and other stationary installation so uh, basically in countries with uh, cold climates uh, this system is also used in car engine so as you can see in this uh, in this uh, diagram uh, this is the uh, the fin that uh, used in the air cooling system and uh, the cooling fins are used to increase the surface area to expose to the air stream next so this is the main part in the air cooling system the surface area over the cylinder is kept bigger by means of uh, the fins. So this fin are uh, either cast as an essential part of the cylinder or different fin uh, barrel are placed over the cylinder barrel. And uh, sometimes, uh, particularly in aero engines, the fins are machined from uh, the forge cylinder blanks. So as the rule, the fins are usually made of about the cylinder wall, thickness at their roots and tapering uh, down to about one half of the root thickness. So this is the example of the full fin that built in uh, with uh, the, uh, the engine that used the air cooling system. Next, uh, how the uh, air cooling system works. So basically an air cooling system transfer heat uh, taken from the space to the air and uh, this heated uh, air is then uh, released on uh, release or expel. And uh, the heat is uh, dissipated directly to the atmospheric air by conduction through the cylinder wall and uh, in order to increase the rate of cooling and the outer surface area of the cylinder and cylinder head is uh, increased by providing uh, radiating sinks and flange. So in bigger units, uh, fans are provided to circulate the air around the cylinder wall and the cylinder head. So uh, this is uh, where is the located the fins which is uh, surround the uh, piston cylinder and we can see this is the piston and the piston ring here and this is connecting rod and this is the crankshaft and crank casing here and fins is the main uh, component that use uh, as a cooling system air cooling system so in this cooling system here is the engine cylinder part inside the cylinder are in the combustion of fuel place and it is under the piston reciprocate this is the upper part is known as the cylinder head and uh, then uh, this is the radius pin that surrounded the cylinder engine and is known as a fin so from this cylinder that surrounded by fin is passed by air and the air is reducing the temperature of cylinder wall so that's the reason it, they call the air cooling system so this is the engine motorcycle that using air cooling system. So generally, engine is the main part of vehicle. So when the when we drive the vehicle, the high velocity of speed 
air is passed from the uh, from this fin from the cylinder surface so this is extended area and uh, extended area uh, means the fin is increased the area cylinder so uh, more of the amount heat rejected to the atmosphere so basically uh, in this method uh, heat is carried away by the air flowing over and uh, around the engine cylinder so in this point, uh, I'll explain when vehicle in high speed velocity, the engine water temperature increase. So the air that from atmosphere was absorbed to the cylinder wall to reduce the temperature. Yeah. And uh, basically, uh, the system is used in the motorcycle, scooter, and etc. And uh, to have efficient cooling, uh, by means of air providing fins around the cylinder and uh, cylinder head increase the contact area so if we study heat transfer when we increase the area the amount of heat rejected is uh, also increased so uh, basically the fins are metallic ridges which are formed during the casting of the cylinder and cylinder head as shown in, the, uh, in this figure so basically uh, when the uh, cylinder uh, was uh, forged uh, by using the uh, by the, using the material of uh, cast iron, and uh, the fin also is uh, formed uh, during the casting of the cylinder. Next, uh, the heat uh, generated due to the combustion in the <coughs> engine cylinder will uh, conducted to the fins, and uh, when the air flows uh, over the fins, heat will uh, dissipated to the air. And uh, means uh, how it is uh, heat transfer when due to the combustion, uh, this is in nearly cylinder is uh, temperature increased by using convection. After that, uh, in nearly of the cylinder wall to the outer layer, it is uh, transfer using the conduction and heat transfer to fins by using the conduction also. And outside the fins, uh, the air flowing, so it is using the convection as when air flows over the fins so the fins are arranged in such a way that uh, they are a right angle to the cylinder exists it increased uh, and uh, provided or located 90 degrees to the cylinder exists so next uh, the amount of heat carried off by the air cooling is uh, depends upon our flowing factors the first one is the velocity of amount of the cooling air. The next is the total area of the fin surface. And the last one is the temperature of the fins and cooling air. So next is the advantage versus disadvantage of air cooling system. Okay, the first one I will explain about the advantage. The, the first uh, advantage uh, the air cool system has no radiator or pump, so the system is uh, very light uh, in terms of the, the weight. And uh, the second one is uh, in case of the water cooling system, there are leakage. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, there are no leakage because uh, they are not using any coolant or the water. So next is uh, coolant and antifreeze solution are not required. As I mentioned in the uh, second uh, point, next is uh, this system can be used in cold climates where if water is used, uh, it may uh, freeze. So next for the disadvantages, uh, the first one is uh, it is comparatively and uh, it is less efficient uh, because of the coefficient of heat transfer for air is uh, less than. Uh, that for the water and the second one is uh, it is limited use in uh, and motorcycle scooter engine where the engine are exposed to the air directly okay next for the next slide okay next is water cooling system and basically this type is the most commonly used type of the system and uh, this water cooling system is used in the engine of cars buses trucks and uh, etc and uh, this is uh, in this system, uh, the water is circulated through water jacket around each of the combustion chamber, cylinder, valve seats, and valve uh, stand. 
and uh, the more in this system dissipation of heat is done by the circulation of the water through the jacket around the cylinder it passes this hot water through the radiator where air uh, absorbs heat from the water next uh, this is the main part of the water cooling system and the first one is radiator second one is thermostat thermostat valve and uh, the third one is water pump and uh, fourth is uh, the fan the fan that uh, attached with the uh, radiator and then a water jacket and the last one is the coolant the coolant is the liquid that uh, using in the water cooling system so uh, next i will explain uh, about how the water cooling system uh, works okay the first one is water pump water pump uh, is the heart of the cooling system which pump the coolant and it consists of an impeller a cooler flange and an o-ring the impeller is driven by the engine drive belt through a pulley next the radiator basically the radiator is a, a heat exchanger used to transfer the excess heat developed by engine to the atmosphere the radiator is uh, having an inlet port then uh, outlet port uh, a drain plug and uh, a radiator pressure cap the radiator pressure cap uh, plays a vital role in the cooling system which will be explained later next the thermostat the thermostat uh, is a valve which uh, regulates the flow of the coolant and helps to maintain the proper operating temperature for the engine the thermostat uh, consists of a frame and then uh, a charge cylinder and a main valve main spring bypass valve and secondary spring next the coolant temperature sensor which is cts the coolant temperature sensor is used to monitor the engine temperature the ecu will use this data to manage fuel injection and uh, ignition time uh, and some engine uh, have more than one coolant temperature sensor and uh, the data is also used to control the radiator fan and uh, to update the temperature gauge on the driver console the coolant uh, temperature sensor consists of a sensing probe and an electrical connector so this is the connector and uh, most coolant temperature sensor are negative temperature coefficient type uh, which means uh, as the temperature increases uh, the resistance will decrease the cts uh, can be two pin type or three pin type and it depends on the make of the vehicle so there are main parts involved in each cooling system so this is how the working uh, principle of the cooling system now let's see how this part works together the pistons are contained inside the engine block in which each of them will function above the engine block comes uh, the head gasket uh, so this is the air gasket which provides sealing between engine block and uh, engine head and also it avoid compression leaks and oil or coolant leaks into the cylinder above that uh, comes the engine head the engine uh, is having a safe passage through with the coolant can flow without entering in the into the cylinder or mixing up with the oil here is the coolant out and this is uh, where the coolant in that put uh, the parts one by one and see how it works so the water pump pumps the coolant throughout the system with the help of the radio inhaler and it is driven by the engine itself using a serpentine uh, belt so this is a belt tensioner the serpentine uh, belt also drives the power steering pump alternator aircon compressor but uh, for now only water pump is shown now uh, let's see the connection so this is bypass hose and uh, this is a uh, thermostat housing and uh, the thermostat and then the radiator 
and uh, behind is the radiator fan and the lower is a uh, lower radiator hose and the hose uh, behind there is a water pump outlet and the above is upper radiator hose so this is the coolant uh, expansion tank and this is the expansion bleed hose and uh, the over, overflow hose so finally let's get into the working starting with the thermostat okay thermostat here the thermostat is actually a valve which uh, regulates the flow of the coolant so it will always be covered in the coolant so that's uh, the temperature can be sensed so let's start the operation from a cold engine when the engine is cold, uh, the bypass valve uh, stays open. So as you can see, this is bypass valve open when uh, in cold. So the coolant bypass the reactor and circulate through the engine. So in this, uh, help the engine to heat up the operating uh, temperature quickly. Eventually, uh, the coolant temperature increases by absorbing the heat from the engine. Once the cooler start to reach higher temperature, which is uh, usually between uh, 160 to 190 Fahrenheit, the bypass valve will start to close and the main valve will start to open. This allows the cold coolant from uh, radiator flow to the engine side and the hot coolant from the engine side uh, to the radiator. In Moscow, uh, the cooler temperature sensor is located near the thermostat housing. So this is the coolant temperature sensor here. And it will turn on the radiator fan if the coolant to the radiator side is at high temperature. Now, the hot coolant in the radiator will release its heat to the atmosphere with the help of the fan. The fan that uh, attached behind the radiator. At the same time, uh, the cool coolant uh, received from the reactor will start to absorb the heat from the engine for the next cycle. So, the hose uh, below here is the low temperature coolant. So, this is the uh, reactor pressure cap. The role of the reactor pressure cap uh, and it have, uh, consists of the spring loaded valve mechanism which will respond to higher pressure. So, reaching a pressure above uh, 15 PSI will uh, push the pressure cap off. And the coolant flow the expansion tank until the pressure goes down to the operation level. And when the system cools down, uh, the vacuum inside the system sucks back the coolant from the expansion tank. In case uh, if there is too much pressure built up in the system due to trap air or the failures, the coolant in the expansion tank will be pushed out through the overflow hose. So this is the heater system. Okay. The heater uh, system comprises of the heater core, inlet and outlet houses, and uh, a heater control valve which is optional and cannot be found in all vehicles. The heater core acts as a radiator dispatching uh, heat from the hot coolant to the vehicle interior using a blower, aircon blower here. So, uh, this is the slide that shows the advantages versus disadvantage of uh, water cooling system. So, the first one I will explain about the advantages of the water cooling system. Okay. The first point is in this type of cooling, we see the high heat uh, transfer rate and uh, next uh, this type of cooling system is used where the size of power the engine is small and then uh, next is thermal conductivity is small uh, and then water is easily available and the last one is liquid has a high enthalpy of uh, vaporization so that uh, enthalpy the efficient of the water cooling is small next the disadvantages of the water cooling system Sometimes corrosion occurs uh, inside the reactor or pipe or storage. Uh, this is because uh, we're using the water, so the water is uh, uh, have some air in the in the substance of the water. Next, uh, due to the scaling, heat transfer rate is goes down after the long run. 
so it needs regular cleaning and uh, maintenance so uh, in this slide uh, shows about the type of the coolant the coolant that used in the water cooling system so basically there are three main type of the coolant that mostly car companies use and the first one is anagonic additive technology which is uh, IAT uh, IAT is uh, the chemical basis for the traditional green antifreeze IAT contains uh, either EG or PG and uh, is usually fortified with uh, silicate or phosphate additive to make it uh, compatible with metal cooling system component and, uh, and next is the organic uh, type of the coolant organic uh, have two types which is organic acid technology and then hybrid organic acid technology OAT and HOAT why did automakers uh, switch to organic coolant and not using the inorganic coolant basically inorganic coolant doesn't uh, last a long time does it need a uh, frequent replacement and this increases uh, maintenance and ownership cost and uh, second one is uh, inorganic coolant works better with the metal used in all the engine which is uh, steel and iron material and then uh, organic coolant works better with the metal uh, used in the newer engine uh, and basically the newer engine is using the aluminium material so after all uh, we can conclude that uh, and we can uh, show the difference of the air cooling system and uh, water cooling system basically uh, as you can see in this slide uh, the, air, uh, the air cooling system has uh, the design of the system is simple and less costly compared to the water cooling system because the water cooling system is designed of uh, is complicated and more costly and uh, for the weight of the cooling system uh, is more light uh, compared to the water cooling system and then uh, the fuel consumption is more and uh, compared to the uh, the fuel consumption by using the water cooling system next uh, installation and maintenance are very easy and less costly uh, by using the air cooling system by comparing to the water cooling system and uh, then the and next is the, the no danger of uh, leakage or freezing of the coolant because the the air cooling system is not using any coolant or water in the system compared to the water cooling system that uh, very danger of uh, leakage or freezing of the coolant the second last is uh, the system uh, more work uh, work more uh, smoothly and continuously moreover uh, it does not depend on any coolant compared to the water cooling system that uh, it must cause uh, serious damage to the engine within a short time and uh, the last one is the air cooling system is not suitable for the multi-cylinder engine compared to the water cooling system that can uh, this system can be employed in a multi-cylinder engine uh, system factory so in the conclusion uh, what we can conclude about the uh, cooling system uh, during the operation of engine the temperature inside the engine can go up to 2500 uh, degrees centigrade which is uh, above the melting point uh, of the component used to make the engine so we need to use the cooling system to dissipate the heat as much as possible and uh, as we know uh, we also need lubrication uh, system to the proper functioning uh, the engine and but due to the high heat property of uh, lubricating oil can be changed and that results is on the engine so to avoid that we need to use the cooling system so sometimes due to the enormous heat uh, thermal stress in the build up inside the engine so to minimize the stress we need to keep the engine temperature as low as possible so uh, that's all for me uh, thank you assalamualaikum